Descriptivism says uh, moral group propositions are commands. They're not actually propositions at all. It, in, where, whereas someone might say murder is bad or stealing is bad, what they're actually saying is do not murder, do not steal. So they're changing it from a, a proposition into a command. That's what prescriptivism says. So now inside of the group of cognitivists who believe that uh, moral propositions do have uh, some truth inside of them. They actually, by saying murder is bad or helping your friend is good, somewhere inside of that sentence there is uh, some truth. So, or there is, there is possibly truth or not truth. I mean, somebody could make a moral proposition and say like, uh, murder is good, and some people might say that that's not true as opposed to murder is bad, where some people might say that that is true. It just has the possibility of being true or not. So, moral realism, moral realists, say there uh, not only are moral propositions uh, apt to be true or untrue, but that some of the moral propositions are actually true. Okay, so instead of saying, okay, if, I, if I make a moral proposition, uh, murder is bad, well, it has the possibility of being true or untrue, depending on who's saying it or what situation it is or, or whatever. But moral realism says that it's possible that it could actually be a true statement. Error theorists say that all moral propositions are false. So that's, a, that's a, their own special group. Alright, so that's sort of the basis for, um, you know, it's a very linguistic basic basis for ethics. I mean, you have to sort of agree on the, the, the word that, you know, the sentence that you make uh, are we are we even making true or untrue sentences or something like that? Uh, let's see. Come back to that stuff. Well, actually, kind of kind of in that light, uh, Hume said, and this is interesting because you know I think I would I would want to study this a little bit more, but it's still interesting. Hume said. No matter how much we observe the world, we cannot say how the world should be or how people ought to act. It's kind of a strange thing, but it's, it's an interesting thing to think about. Okay, so um, let's talk about morals. Uh, are morals innate? And we can talk about this later. Or are they taught to us um, socially? Are we born with something inside of us that tells us what is good or what is bad, or um, we have to be taught them, taught, taught morals by our family and people around us? Manners are the same way, and I think I think you'll hear me asking these questions. You probably can already answer them in your own head, which is fine. Um, our, our, our manner is something that we're born with, or are they taught to us by society? So then, if you're asking yourselves these questions, and you say, okay, where does something like genocide come from? Um, is genocide something that we're born with, or is that something that's taught to us by society? Um, I think there are some people here that may have um, direct experience with ethnic cleansing. I don't. I'm from a you know, very sheltered place in the United States where you watch Sesame Street and eat McDonald's all year round. Um, but I know ethnic cleansing and genocide do happen. What is ethnic cleansing? What are genocide? I should probably define those. Maybe I don't need to define those, but um, just massive killing off uh, people of, say, one religion. 
or um, one social background. So, um, maybe let's go back to let's 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 go into a little bit of, of biology and talk about evolution. What does it mean that humans are evolving? Uh, Darwin, Darwin's theory of evolution um, states that we are evolving, we are uh, a process, we are in a process of evolution. So, what does that mean? Um, we're physically evolving, we've changed a lot in the last 100,000, 200,000 years, but we're also emotionally evolving and interpersonally evolving. And I think that's kind of where the battle between philosophical ethics and religious ethics comes in. Um, as a whole group of people here on Earth, as a whole humanity, we're interpersonally evolving. Our, our ethics are evolving. You know, it's gonna, it's gonna, it's, it might not be long before there is a human-chimp hybrid or before we have robots that have your given names at birth or something like that. We have to write a whole new set of, of ethics for them as well. So culture is evolving, politics are evolving, and possibly even philosophy is evolving. I think that's what this process, I think that's part of what this process, this forum process is for. It's not just about the, the evolution of philosophy, but it's also for the evolution of each of our minds. Um, I, I, I said, I wrote down here, and it sounds a little strange, but science is an almost mechanical evolution of what the human brain is capable of understanding. So as we you know, go through these <clears throat> next 20, 30, 40 years, and as we grow, um, our understanding and our collective understanding of how the world works and who we are on this planet um, will be, hope, I can't, can't say for sure, I, I, I can't look into the future, but I think that will also be evolving and growing. So, you know, Darwin's theory of evolution was interesting because it, it gave it, it taught us that um, we came from very low, uh, relatively, I mean, I, I, I wouldn't say that any other animal is any lower than I am, but I mean, physically, I'm a lot taller than, than the animals that we came from a long time ago, um, a really, really long time ago. From bacteria all the way, uh, up to one very interesting one. Uh, I can't remember the name of it specifically. It's got a long Latin name. I won't try to remember it. I didn't try to remember it, so I can't possibly remember it. But um, looks like a worm, but it has uh, a very um, basic spine. It's a, it's a, it's a cor chordate organism with a uh, with a, a spinal cord that sends its, uh, you know, ele uh, electron, uh, whatever, all the fluid and the electrical impulses and everything that a spine does. So, the, you know, this has a very slightly developed social, sorry, central nervous system. Um, Everything that exists on Earth right now that has a spine came from that one animal. Um, it's about, what, I can't remember exactly, about 500 million years ago. 500 million, something about 500 million years ago. And then uh, at, at one point, 230 million years ago, a lot of those animals, 98, not a lot, not, not that animal, that animal survived, but a lot of its friends that it was swimming around with in the ocean, 98% of them died off. But in that 2%, that one small animal lived and um, eventually evolved to be 
dinosaurs and then mammals and, and us. So, um, <clears throat> a few more minutes. Five, five more minutes. Well, I can really talk a lot. I, I'm just on my second page. Go, go faster. Yeah. Uh, sure. I can try. I think what I, I wanted to get on to, I, I guess I'm speaking at length about, um, I was going to talk about social Darwinism 